All right, so today I'm going to be talking about just optimizing your internet to the best of its ability. Um, so let's start, and I'm pretty much going to draw everything in paint. It's going to look like shit because I can't draw and it's paint, but this is the best way of me, like for me to actually explain it, I think. So let's start with this. So let's say you have, doesn't matter if you have cable internet, DSL, or fiber. The way to tell is a fiber line, you should you should just know if you have fiber. If you have a thousand down, a thousand up, if you have symmetrical speeds that are very high, symmetrical meaning like a thousand up, thousand down, five hundred up, five hundred down, you most likely have fiber. Um if you have like five hundred up and like twenty down or fifty down I sorry, five hundred down and like fifty up, you probably have cable internet. And then if you have like what five down and one up you probably have dsl which is using the phone line the so cable internet uses a coax cable and then obviously fiber uses a fiber line so on and so forth so let's say that you have your isp which is your internet service provider and they give you a modem right and this modem goes out to wherever the fuck it goes to provide you with internet being a fiber line whatever it is right so the modem that the ISP gives you, sometimes it acts as a modem and a router. So you'll only have one device in your house. This thing also has Wi-Fi built into it. This is the setup I have currently. I just have the modem. I don't have a router plugged in. Um, but if this is your case here, what you want to do is you'd want to take your computer here, your gaming computer, and you want to hardwire your computer into the first ethernet port or into one of the ethernet ports. Um, this, it depends on your actual modem and how many devices you have on the, on the actual, like connected to the modem. If you have a ton of devices connected, a bunch of TV, smart TVs, smart devices, we're talking like iPhone. If you have more than like, let's just say 10 devices connected to this modem or router, you should probably buy a router to put between this here and then hook this to your computer and we're not just any router a router with qos that's very important i'll talk about this later but let's just say you have less than 10 devices you should be able to perfectly just hardwire your computer and using a good ethernet cable um i have some recommendations here here's a cat Go with Cat8. It's the newest Ethernet cable, and they're cheap. They're it's gonna don't go for Cat7, Cat6, Cat5e. Like it's all gonna be the same price. You might as well just go for the best one. It doesn't matter if it's way higher speeds than you, like 40 gigs. Obviously, you're probably not getting 40 gig down, but it's the same price. You might as well just buy a Cat8 cable. Um, connect your computer directly to the modem. If you can't connect directly to the modem, let's say the modem's in the basement or something. Um. Don't use Wi-Fi, like if you have to use Wi-Fi, but buy Powerline Ethernet adapters. Amazon's really good on return policy. Just buy, make sure they support a thousand down, not like AV600, look for AV2000 or AV1000. Test them, see if you get lower ping and better internet. If you don't, return them. Amazon's return policy is great, so just test it, why not, right? You, like see if you can get a better connection with these. I highly recommend using these over Wi-Fi. Very, very, very highly recommend it. Obviously, the best recommendation would be plug directly into the modem or router. This is your first case scenario here. Now, let's say you have more than ten vice, like more than ten devices connected to this modem. What you want to do is you want to attach a router to this, and you might already have a router attached to your modem. Or some people have the option where they can actually just they can ditch the factory modem that's given by the ISP. And they can just replace it with a third party router. You want to make sure this third party router has something called quality of service. Same with this router here that you're plugging in quality of service. What quality of service is, is it, it lets you limit the bandwidth on that's coming through the actual router. So let's say, for example, I have my, here, I have my modem here, right? And I have more than 10 devices connected to this thing, and it doesn't have QoS, it has Wi-Fi. And I have a whole different bunch of devices connected. 
all the internet that's coming through, all the packets that are coming through, the modem isn't smart. It doesn't know how to prioritize packets. So it just sends packets wherever the fuck it wants. And your packets aren't getting prioritized. And let's say you're gaming on this PC here and you're streaming or doing, or even just gaming. It's not, the thing is the modem isn't smart enough to know that it needs to push packets to your gaming PC in the right way. So what it does is, is it will just, it will cause something called buffer bloat which isn't good for online gaming. You can do a buffer bloat test on speed, uh, on DSL reports. You just go to DSL reports, speed test, run test, and choose what you have. Like this is like, obviously this is the best case scenario. This is what I have, A plus across the board. This is because I have a dedicated fiber line just for my computer. I don't, there's nothing else connected to this modem except for my computer. That's why this is up here with the A pluses, but you can easily get A plus scores if you run a router with QoS here. So going back to this, the modem doesn't know what to do, right? So it, cause it doesn't have quality of service built into it. So it just shoots packets wherever it wants and doesn't prioritize packets at all. If you have a less than a B in buffer bloat, get a router, go out and just go look up QoS routers and look up good. There's shitty QoS routers and then there's good QoS routers. Just do your research, Reddit, Google, and just look for good QoS, QoS routers. Nighthawk, Asus, like Asus makes some good ones. Nighthawk is obviously probably like some of the best well-named things. Uh, NetDuma makes one as well. That's pretty good. But um, what you're going to want to do here is once you have, let's say you do have this setup or modem, modem router plugged in now, you want to disable the Wi-Fi on the modem here. And then you want to make sure that your public IP that comes from the modem is pulling to the router. So what this modem does is it, it's going to assign, like, let's say you just have the modem again. The modem assigns IP addresses like 192.168.2.15. Let's say that's your PC and then 2.16 to your iPhone, so on and so forth. You don't want the modem assigning the router with its, with just like a regular IP address, like a 192.168.2.15. You want the modem to allow the router to grab the public IP address. So what this runs into the problem is a lot of people have their modems. They'll literally get a modem, they'll buy a router and they'll just plug it in and forget about it. And what this is doing is it's causing something called double, fi double firewalls, which you do not want at all. Your, mo your router has a firewall. Your modem's going to have a firewall as well. What is that? <laughs> so you do not want double firewalls. This is bad. This will cause tons of packet loss and just like think about it the packets have to come through get recognized through a firewall and then go through another firewall and then go out and then send be sent back the same way that's just it's it's a terrible thing for gaming you do not want this so how what you'd want to do is you want to either you want to you can put the router sorry in the modem settings there's something called dmz what this does is it allows Whatever, de whatever device you choose to bypass the modem's firewall. So you can actually choose the router's IP address or the router's MAC address and assign it to the DMZ address of this modem. That will allow it to bypass the firewall and this will get, a this will get the public IP now. To be able to check if you're getting the public IP from the router, you just log into the router and look for the IP. And if it has a public IP, which is like, it'll be something so random. It could be like 87. 36 dot it could be like you never know you'll, you'll know if it's a public ip if it's not a public ip it's going to be most likely a 192.168 number or like a 10.0.0.1 like or something along those lines you can also just type in what's my ip on google and then you'll tell you your public ip and then make sure and then you can just compare that to your router so that's one way of doing it another way is you can um what is it called? I forget the name of it. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but um, you can log into your router if you um here let me here. modem plus router. Sorry, you can skip over this part. I'm just uh login. Called. I'm just hoping TCP optimizer here. Don't download TCP optimizer. It's literally useless. 
unless you're checking MTU size. So it's called PPOE, that's it. So what you can do is you can log in with your, for your router, you can log in to your modem using PPOE on your router. And that will assign the public IP address to this router. That's another way of doing it. There's also something called VLAN tagging. You can do that as well. You can search that up. But yeah, that's that's very, very important. For online games, you want to make sure that you have a router that either has barely any devices connected to it that you're connected to, or you have a router with QoS. And once you have QoS, let's say you do buy a router, let's say you follow these steps, you buy a router with QoS, what's the next steps? You go into quality of service and then it depends. You can, there's automatic ones. There's, uh, you can like, there's ones that will just auto optimize. You can choose gaming. I like to do mine manually. And what I do is I take 70% of my download and upload speed and I put it in manually. So that's how I get like, don't do a, make sure you do a DSL reports speed test, not a speed test.net. And what you do is let's say you got, let's say I got like, what did this one say? I get 776. Let's say this is 750 and 600. I'm going to take 70% of both those numbers and I'm going to put that into my router QoS as my download and upload speed. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the overhead. So the whole point of QoS is you don't want 100% of your internet speed coming to your, like 100% of the traffic flowing right to your device. That's what causes something called overhead and it causes buffer bloat. You can look up more into buffer bloat and how important it is. Um, Battle Nonsense does a whole thing on it, but buffer bloat is very, very, very important to make sure that you do it. You're right. Um, I think uh, NetDuma has a really good article on it, actually. Gender's Guide to Buffer Bloat, pretty much. And this literally just, if you want to read this article, it's pretty much just says, like, this is your network traffic. And when there's a lot of devices, it doesn't know what to do. And what you want, like, this is standard QoS. There's something called anti-buffer bloat, and that's where it's pretty much taking 70%. NetDoom is good. The problem is they don't support VLAN tagging, which I'm, a, I like to VLAN tag my stuff. So, not yet, at least. Their software doesn't. They said it should be out this year. And then... Maybe I'll use their router, but right now I just have it sitting aside. You can also get, um, let's say you do have a fiber connection, like you have Bell, like I have. You can bypass, um, fiber. what you can do is you can bypass the actual um, fiber line itself and, and ditch the modem that Bell gives you using something along the lines of drag this over using something like this and what this allows you to do is plug your fiber line like directly into like using you can take remove the SFP from the actual modem and plug it right into here and then plug this ethernet cable right into your router itself it really depends on like what kind of setup you want to do a lot of people use this to bypass bell's modem in canada just because bell's home hub 3000 is terrible so you can and if you just if you plug the modem into a router that's just extra routing that you don't want especially when it comes to fiber so it's good to use like these media converters um but yeah this is very important Getting a router with QoS, and again, you don't have to do it. You don't have to manually manually input it. If it has really good QoS, just let it do it automatically, and you should be able to get a really good buffer bloat from doing this. Optimizing internet is very very important. I can't stress that enough. Online gaming, like a huge chunk of online gaming, is internet. Prioritize your internet. It's a very, very big peaker's advantage, all that kind of crap. It all comes like with internet. You need to make sure that you have good buffer bloat and just good throughput with your how your internet is set up. Uh, that's pretty much all I can cover here. 
If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else really. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, just an, another thing. Yeah, if you're doing modem to router, make sure you disable the Wi-Fi. Make sure the router is the only thing that's plugged into this modem, and make sure all your devices are connected to this router now, which will probably have wi which like 100% of the time have Wi-Fi, and then use QoS to prioritize from there. You can also when routers have QoS, they can also set like certain devices to like highest elevations so you can actually choose your pc and say like prioritize this to the highest or you can select some of them have like asus ones have like game mode where you can turbo boost like one device and you can just choose your computer just small things like that but yeah um this would be my this is pretty much just covering internet and making sure that you do not have double firewalls and making sure that if you have a modem and a router that you're modem is assigning the outside public ip to the router and not a stat like just a regular ip address that's it for this video thanks for watching and if you have any questions just leave them in the comments and i'll try and get to them or just dm me or message me on twitter discord i have my optimization server join that obviously i'm doing a lot of people know i'm doing optimizations for free i'm also doing paid optimizations as well that's on a private schedule. Just DM me for that. That's within a week. I think I'm booked up for free ones for the next two months. So that's going to be a while. So, and it's only like, I think to get on the paid one, it's 20 bucks I'm charging right now. It's like, and most appointments are around three to four hours because I do everything. Literally, we go through everything. We do a full custom BIOS, full custom Windows install, um, full OBS optimization. Um, Make sure your PC is not overheating and like solve any like blue screen errors, stuff like all that kind of crap. If you have any any questions at all, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. I'm not going to lie to you and I'm not going to, if I don't have the answer, I will tell you I don't have the answer. I'll say I do not know. I'm not going to bullshit you at all that way. And yeah, that's, and that, that alone takes up a really, probably like a good three hours of time doing everything. And also, obviously we do, we go through this whole thing that I explained about internet as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Again, just leave anything in the comments if you have any questions.